Hi, I'm Mike from 1A Auto. We've been selling auto parts for over 30 years. Hey everyone, Sue here from 1A Auto. And today we have a 2011 Hyundai Sonata in the shop and we're gonna do rear brakes. If you need these parts or any other parts for your car, click on the link below and head on over to 1AAuto.com. 21 millimeter socket and we're gonna take the wheel off. I've still got the weight of the vehicle on the tire so that I can break the lug nuts free without the tire spinning. Now I'm gonna bring it up, take it off by hand, use my two post lift. You can use a jack and jack stands at home. Now with the car up in the air, I can take the lug nuts completely off. I always open the bleeder screw before I start a brake job so that I can push the piston back and make sure the caliper is good. But I'm already going to tell you I've already done that and the piston is seized and the bleeder screw is seized. But let's, let's give it a whirl on camera and if we break it, we break it because I'm replacing the caliper anyways. Yeah, there you go. So now you have a broken bleeder screw. You have two ways to do this. Open this, this is what the next step I would do. If I was if I was unaware that the caliper was good, bad, or indifferent, I didn't have the money to replace it. I would take the brake hose off so that the fluid would come through here instead of back into the ABS system. And I would compress now this caliper. So I'm going to take the actual caliper off the bracket. By the way, that bolt for the banjo bolt for that flex hose was a 12 millimeter socket, and the mounting bolts are a 14. These are the sliders, slider bolts. And that's spinning. Let's see if we can get the top one. So we need a wrench. So I'm gonna hold the slider pin and undo the mounting bolt to the slider pin. Dismount the caliper from the bracket. And I'm gonna go get a, something to squeeze the piston. I'm gonna use a pair of welding clamp pliers, locking pliers, and I'm gonna push this piston back. Confirm that it's worth trying to fix if I wanna fix it or just replace it. See, so I got the fluid coming out of the back of the actual piston housing caliper where the flex hose meets. And that tells me that that piston's good. So if I'm low on funds, now I would just mount this, take it over to a vise, someplace steady, and I would try to take this out with an easy out or drill it out. The caliper bracket that mounts to the knuckle there's two mounting bolts. One's in the top here, very noticeable. You can see it out front. It's a 14 millimeter wrench or a socket. The other one is right here inside behind this trailing arm. So you're not gonna take a trailing arm out to get that bolt out. So I'm gonna put a 14 millimeter wrench in here. Let's see if we can break that free. So now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take the top one completely out, and then I'm going to just loosen this and pull on the bracket so that the bolt can stay in there and act like a vise in a sense of pushing it out. So we don't have to worry about bottoming the actual wrench out. Wow, 
Nice. Okay. Almost at the end of the bolt. When I saw a little bit of daylight between the bracket and the knuckle, I sprayed in there some rust inhibitor, so penetrating spray. So now we're at the point where the bolt can't go further this way because this caliper bracket can't go any more this way because the rotor is stopping it. So now I'm going to dismount my rotor and hope to get a little bit more room to get that bolt out. So these are mounting screws. Uh, you just use an impact driver, screwdriver bit. And you break them free. So now I just grabbed a little flathead pry bar. You can use a screwdriver, and I'm pushing this bracket away from the knuckle so that I have guarantee that that bolt is bottomed out inside. So I have the freedom to move my wrench back and forth and remount it every time so I can finish turning this bolt out. So I ended up changing it down to a open end wrench so that I can max that bolt out right to this trailing arm to get this bracket out. So the reason I didn't want to do it the way it's supposed to be done obviously is to remove this trailing arm because you can see the condition of this arm. And these bolts go into this subframe and if that's rotted and rusted in there it's going to snap off. But I'm going to spray it, heat it up, take this out to reinstall it because this is, the bolt is longer than I expected it to be. There we go. Now we can take the rotor off. We can actually see the e-brake shoes and the condition they're in. They're in good shape. The bonding's not moving. That's a plus. Here we have our brand new rotors and pads for our 2011 Hyundai from 1A Auto. These are the brake pads that I'm going to be replacing. Plenty thick enough, actually almost the same, if not as thickness as the manufacturer's brand new rear brakes. They have at least 10, 30 seconds on them. They come with riveted shims, the indicator. They cut out in the center for cooling, and they've got the two beveled edges to help disperse the brake dust. And our rotor is cross-cut, has the two mounting bolts to the hub, has the window for the e-brake adjuster. It's got a nice deep groove in here for cooling and that's where the backing plate sits in. And it is marked for the discard minimum thickness. If you need this part or any other part for your car, click on the link below and head on over to 1AAuto.com. When you're installing new rotors, you must take the old rotor and take the rubber boot out that is the access to the e-brake adjuster and just install it into the new, new rotor. So I'm gonna remove the rear upper control arm so I have access to this mounting bolt on the caliper bracket. 19 millimeter socket and a wrench on the other side. And I have pre-sprayed this. Here we go. 
19 millimeter up here too, and I'm gonna loosen up the upper control arm inner bolt. See if we can get some movement out of this. Maybe we don't have to take that bolt all the way out. It's going to take a pry bar. Now I'm going to clean the hub surface before I remount my rotor. Just taking any rust buildup off. Closest to the hub, the center of it, that's where a lot of it builds up. You always want a smooth mounting surface so you don't have an uneven braking, cause a pulsation. Give that a clean. I'm going to clean the e-brake shoes while I'm here. Get rid of that brake buildup. I'm going to clean the rotor. I just like to turn it around that way so I can get to the back surface. Get the package oil off of it. They put that on there so moisture doesn't form and cause little rust spots while it sits on a shelf. Waiting for little old you to buy it. <laughs> Before I uh, turn it around, I'm going to spray the hub with a little any seeds. Now I can find the mounting holes. Place my rotor on. See the two slotted holes line up. And I can install my bolts. They cone shaped with a Phillips head on them. You don't want to put any thread lock on there. You want these things to come off again and again to reuse them. Now I can clean this outer surface, get that packaging oil off. So here's our new caliper, and I just wanted to show you what I'm going to do to my new caliper, and you can do it to the old one if you're not replacing your calipers. Um, if your old caliper, you should already have it dismounted, actually from the caliper bracket. That's a 14, and the inner one is a 17. Now, even though this is new and a good caliper company will do what I'm about to do. I'm going to show you the steps to do it to your old caliper and that way I like to double check also because I've had calipers that should have been lubricant and they're not so it's not going to work out. So you're going to take your caliper bracket and either clean up your hardware or put new hardware on. If you have the old caliper you're going to take a wire brush right here and get rid of all any rust buildup and debris, clean it. And you're gonna put a thin coat of caliper grease. Or in this case, I have high temp silicone. I just want a thin, small coat. So it keeps water from building up underneath and rust. And then I'll install my shim. It's hardware for the caliper, actually. I'm gonna do the same to this side. Now once you've cleaned your bracket, Put your hardware on. If you didn't get new hardware, take a wire brush to the both front and back side of the tins and do not put any silicone or caliper grease on the mounting surface that the pads are going to be hitting. Now we're going to take the slider pins out. Let's see if I can get in there. I'm 
Oh, yeah. oh that's got grease in it. <laughs> Let's make sure this side does. Yep. Kind of sticks a little bit. But see that? I don't think there's any grease deep down inside that pin. So I'm going to take this off. So I got it out, and there's, there's plenty of uh, caliper grease in there, but there is a high spot where it was horned out. Right there, won't turn. It's a good thing to examine your calipers, even though they're new. Yep. That's got quite a bit of drag to it. Look at it picked. So I know what happened here. See how this is dipped in a paint coating? They didn't block the actual slider holes, and they put this all completely in the paint. So the inside bore holes have paint on there. So glad I did this, because now I'm going to take it out, take it apart, take the boots off. And I'm going to take my boring brush and I'm going to clean in there and get rid of that paint. Now I've got a new bore brush that I'm going to put right in there and clean out the paint, hopefully. You see that? Look at all the black paint coming out. Wow. So that would have caused these brakes to wear at an uneven and premature wear due to the slider pin not being able to slide at a nice free pace. Still something right in between there, right in the middle. So I'll continue until I get a nice clean feel smooth surface. And that one's pretty good already. Look at the piece that came out. That's a good lesson. You spend this time doing your brakes, you want to do them right. So now I'm going to put these boots back on. And you can see the inner lip, how they pop in there. Put some new caliber silicone paste right on these pins. Look at that. Perfect. Well, I'm glad we discovered that together. Perfect. Now we're ready to assemble that. Now I'm going to put the caliper bracket around the rotor, sit it up against the knuckle, and I'm going to install the bottom mounting bolt. There we go. Get the top one. Those are 14 millimeter socket. It's going to be so much nicer with that control I'm out of the way. <laughs> I'm just going to snug these up and I'm going to get my torque wrench and torque them to the manufacturer's recommendation. Right. So I've got my 14 millimeter socket and the specs, the manufacturer specs is 47 to 54 foot pounds. You can guess what I'm going at. No, <laughs> I said it at 54. Only because of the car of the age, it's a 2011, so I know that things are worn. It's probably like the fourth brake job this car has gotten. I'm going to put the inner pad in. There we go. Line it right up. And the outer pad. Perfect. So 
now I've got the pads in the bracket. Before I mount the actual caliper, we've got to bring down the upper control arm and we put that in the actual spot. I'm gonna take a rubber mallet, see if I can tap that down in. I can put that lower upper control arm, shall I say, bolt through. I've got a flat washer and the actual mounting bolt. Not tension, sorry. Now that's in place, I'm now I'm going to mount the caliper. Comes with two new mounting bolts for the slider pins. I can put that lower upper control arm, shall I say, bolt through. I've got a flat washer and the actual mounting bolt. Not tension, sorry. Now that's in place, I'm now I'm gonna mount the caliper. And put the mounting screws on the sliders. And now I'm gonna get a rag, I'm gonna clean the surface of this flex of the hip flexos. Make sure there's no dirt where the washer is going to sit. Actually look at it, make sure there's no scratches or gouges. Looks good. So one washer on that side and one washer on this side. Now on this manufacturer, there's a pinhole right here, as you can see where my thumb finger is. So that flex hose has a mounting bracket that's going to go right in there, like that. Make sure that the hose stays lined up with that mounting slot. 14 millimeter socket for the slider bolt and 17 on the inside here. Got my torque wrench set at 24 foot-pounds. Do the same to the top. tighten down on my bleeder screw, which I started, and as you can see, it has the alignment for that 
flex hose is a little pinhole in the caliper. You make sure that that alignment pin goes there. And now on a caliper banjo bolt, you just want to bottom it out and then just give it a good tighten. You want those washers to kind of get flattened. Perfect. Now I can undo my clamp on my hose. I'm going to open up my bleeder screw and let it gravity bleed. 10 millimeter socket. I'm going to break this open. And while that is gravity bleeding, I'm going to torque down my upper control arm bolts. I'm just going to bottom these out and then torque them right down. on the inner one is inner bolt is 65 foot pounds and the torque on the outer is 65 foot pounds and as you can see we are bleeding fluid is coming out now we have a steady stream of brake fluid coming out no air bubbles so I'm going to tighten up my bleeder screw Snug it down. I'm going to repeat this process on the other side and then I'm going to pump my brakes up, check my fluid, and feel how the brake pedal look for leaks at my new banjo bolts on both my calipers. If you did not replace your caliper, then look for leaks on your bleeder screw. Make sure everything's good. Give it a road test. Now we're ready to put the tire back on. Put one lug nut on the bottom, holds the rim tight to the hub, and I can put the other four on. Hand tighten all the lug nuts right down, <clears throat> make it snug. I'm going to lower the vehicle down, put enough weight on the tire so that I can torque it to the manufacturer's specs. 21 millimeter socket. And the manufacturer's specs is 80 foot-pounds for the lug nuts. I'm always going to do it in a star pattern. And one last time. Now you're ready to go. Thanks for watching. Visit us at 1AAuto.com for quality auto parts, fast and free shipping, and the best customer service in the industry.